Hello everybody and welcome to DirectX 11 tutorial 14. So in our previous tutorials we had finished setting up our rendering pipeline for just basic rendering and what we need to do now is we need to create our vertex buffer and draw. We are going to go up to our graphics header and we are going to include our vertex header. We're going to create an object to store our vertex buffer. The data type is id3d11buffer. We're going to add a new initialize function for initializing the scene. And this will just, you know, initialize the vertex buffers and whatever for this scene. Let's create this definition. Go into that. Now the way that the initialize scene will work is first we are creating an array of our vertices. In this example, we are just going to draw one point in the center of the screen. So we are starting at zero, zero, and we are only drawing one point, so we only have one object in this array. We need to create a buffer description for our vertex buffer. So we create the object, we zero the memory to initialize it. And then for the usage, we are just doing the default usage the byte width is the size of our buffer. So we only have one object, so size of vertex would technically work here. However, I'd rather for now pass in size of vertex times the array size, because if we ever add more vertices, which we will in this tutorial, we would have to update the byte width every time. Next we have the bind flags. This is a vertex buffer, so we are just using the bind vertex buffer flag. We have the CPU access flags and miss flags. We're not going to be using these right now. We won't have any CPU access with our vertex buffer. We need to create a sub resource data. And all this will have is just a pointer to our vertex data in this pcis mem uh, variable. Next, we need to call create buffer where we pass in the buffer description we just made, the sub resource data. We call get address of on our vertex buffer in order to populate it. If it fails, we do what we normally do where we call the air logger and the air. And if it's successful, we will return true. Now up in our initialize, we need to call this initialize scene. And let's test this and just make sure that the buffer is being initialized and we're not getting any errors for that. Okay, so the buffer is being initialized. So the next step is to draw. In our render frame, we will do all of the drawing between clearing our render target and presenting. Now in order to draw, we will call draw from the device context. The first argument is the number of vertices to draw. We only have one vertex, so we'll pass in one. And the second argument is the start vertex location, so it's the offset. Uh, we're just going to do zero because we're not offsetting, but we will look at that in a moment. However, there are some more things we have to do before we can draw. If we try to draw like this, uh, it might crash your GPU and make it restart. All kinds of things could happen. So what we have to do is before we draw, we have to set our input layout, which we get that from our vertex shader. We have to set our primitive topology for the input assembly. Now, we are drawing points, so we are using the point list topology. We have to set the vertex shader and the pixel shader from the device context. We have to set the vertex buffers. Now keep in mind, we just created that vertex buffer a moment ago in our initialize scene function. Uh, you can have multiple vertex buffers loaded in, so that is why the first argument is the start slot, the second argument is the number of buffers. We are only setting it to one vertex buffer right now. Later when we do instancing, we will have two buffers, and one of the buffers will be for the instance data, and the other buffer will be for the actual vertex data. The last two arguments are just the stride, uh, or an uh, the address of the stride and the address of the offsets. So just a reminder, the stride is 
the size of, I guess, the input for that buffer in the offset, you know, it's just the offset. So now when we call draw, we should see a white pixel in the middle. So let's test this and see what we get. And there we have it. We have a very small white pixel in the middle. Now, what if we want to draw multiple pixels? Well, before we draw multiple pixels, let's go over how the coordinate system works uh, in our default vertex shader. All right, so let's say that this is our window. And currently we have a point in the middle at 0, 0. All right. The way that it works is for our x coordinates, which will be represented in green, we go from negative 1 to positive 1 on the x axis. So if you want to draw something on the very left side to be negative 1, on the very right side to be positive 1. And the same idea for the y axis, the y axis will work just like how we learned in school when we were doing graphs. The y-axis at the very top will be positive 1, and the very bottom will be negative 1. Now when we get to mapping texture coordinates, you will see that it's actually uh, the y-axis is flipped for texture coordinates, but we will worry about that later when we actually get to it. So if we want to draw a point just to the left of our center point, and another point just to the right. And then let's say we also want to draw a point above our center point. Our coordinates will be something like this. For the left point, we could have negative 0.1 for our x, 0 for the y. For our top point, we could have 0 for the x and 0 0.1 for the y. And then for our right point, we could have 0 0.1 for the x and 0 for the y. So let's try to implement this. Back inside of our solution, we are going to go down to our vertex buffer. We're going to add these points. All right, now that we have added that, we don't have to do anything else right here, but let's go up to where we are drawing. Now, now where we are drawing, we are only drawing one vertex. So if we test this right now, we will still only get that point in the center. But if we want to draw all four vertices, we could pass in the four, we're drawing four vertices, and you see now we have four points. Now let's get back to that offset, uh, the start vertex location that I had mentioned earlier. We know that our very first vertex is the one in the center, and then we have the left one, and the right one, and the top one. So let's say that for some reason we just want to draw all of the vertices except that middle one. What we could do is we could start at vertex number one and just draw three. So we're drawing the second, third, and fourth vertex, but not the first one. When we test this out, we should get all of the points except the center point, and that is what we get. If we wanted to change the color of the pixels we are rendering, we could go into our pixel shader, and currently this is the only way that we can control what we are rendering, or the colors. So if we put 0 for our red and 0 for our blue and just rendered green, we should get green pixels, which are actually uh, kind of hard to see. Let's try red. Oh, those are really hard to see too. I think we'll just stick with white. But that is how currently we would change the color of the pixels we are rendering. Alright, so this tutorial hasn't been long so far, so I think it'd be good if we went ahead and covered how to draw a different type of primitive topology, such as lines. So we could change our topology to a line list. 
And we're going to keep, uh, let's see, we're going to keep the same vertices that we had. We're going to back, we're going to go back to drawing all four with a zero offset. And we're going to test this and see what we get. Okay, so you see we get two lines. The first line is between the first two vertices, the middle point and the left point. And the second line is from the last two vertices, the right point and the top point. All right, so let's close out of this. What if we wanted to draw something else? Let's see what else we have. Um, we also have a line strip. Now, let's go ahead and test this. A line strip should actually connect all of those lines, I believe. So yeah, what this is doing, I'm going to lower the center point to, to demonstrate this better because the lines overlap. Let's close out of this and let's go down. And for the center point, we are going to set the Y value to negative 0.1, just so it starts lower. Let's run that and you see, okay. So we have the center point, which is right here now at the bottom, and it's going to our, our next, our second point, which is the left point. Then it goes over to our right point, and then it goes to the top point. So that is how the line strip works. Now if we go back, let's say that we want to draw a triangle. So we could choose triangle list, and you know, a triangle only has three uh, points. So we would change this to draw three. And then we would have to go down to our vertices. And we know we have that center point, the left point, and the right point. Let's take out the top point. And let's test this. All right, and there is our triangle. It goes from the center point to the left point to the right point. So there are some other uh, formats you can mess with, like drawing quads and so forth. But that is all that we are going to cover for right now. In the future, you know, we, we had created this vertex buffer when we initialize a scene. In the future, we'll have a renderable object class and other different types of uh, things we might render might inherit from that. In that class, we'll do all of this initialization. We won't actually do any of this in our graphics class, but for now we're just going to have it like this just for demonstrating. So in the next tutorial, what we will probably do is modify our input layout, and instead of just passing the position to the vertex shader, we will also pass in the color, and we will render three different colors on this triangle. We will also have to modify the pixel shader, and the vertex shader of course, to accept in the color.